The Camelian Hastati were the early prototype for the more famous Hastati of the late Roman Republic. Although similar in appearance to their counterparts, Camelian Hastati fought in a completely different manner. Following the disastrous Battle of Allia, the popular general Marcus Furius Camulus became the dictator of the city of Rome. Despite being in exile at the time, Camulus's skill as a general was desperately needed. The Gauls, who had defeated a relatively large Roman hoplite army, were now within the walls of Rome and were currently tearing the city apart looking for gold. Upon hearing of the situation, Camulus managed to rally what was left of the destroyed Roman army, catching the plunder-heavy Gauls just outside of the city and slaughtering them. However, Rome was still in a tricky situation. You see, Rome had only just established itself as the hegemonic power over the Latins, and now the fact that they had been so badly beaten by a bunch of uncivilised Gauls made them look kind of pathetic. Disgruntled cities under her control were beginning to think about rebelling and regaining their freedom. If the Roman army couldn't stop a bunch of uncivilised Gauls, then they definitely could not stop a civilised one. This was the conundrum that was on everyone's mind, especially Camulus. Camulus concluded that the main reason why the Romans had lost so badly at the Battle of Allia was that the hoplite phalanx, the default military type in the civilised world at the time, was too inflexible. Defeat, after all, had been caused by the Roman troops not being able to pass through their lines efficiently, thus confusing and as a result, breaking up the formation. Camulus decided to loosen up the phalanx a bit. Instead of one continuous line, Camulus broke up the phalanx into a quincux formation. Five points arranged into a cross, with four of them forming a square on the outside and a fifth in the centre. This gave the phalanx more flexibility as now each soldier could move freely, while still being able to strike with their spears whilst also presenting a solid line against their enemy. Hoplite warfare had already been split into classes and ages, with some arranging the oldest to youngest, whilst others did the opposite. Rome seemed to have arranged their phalanxes from youngest to oldest, with the youngest and poorest being in the front, and the veterans being in the rear. For some reason, probably to do with mobility, Camulus permanently arranged his newly reformed army into classes and ages, with the poorest and youngest rank being called the Hastati. Arms and Armour In terms of armour, these Hastati are somewhat, well, lacking. While other ancient armies, such as the Greeks, heavily utilised body armour, the Romans adopted for a different approach due to cost and practicality. Body armour was a significant expense in ancient times, requiring skilled craftsmen to make expensive materials such as bronze, iron or leather. Since the Roman army was primarily composed of citizen soldiers who had to purchase their equipment, it was much more cost effective for them to rely on a simple tunic and the scutum for protection. The tunic was made of wool or linen and could provide some protection from cuts and abrasions. Additionally, the scutum was a highly effective form of protection. The shield was large enough to cover a significant portion of the body, including the torso, when forming the famous Roman testudo formation or tortoise formation, the shields were held together to create a nearly impenetrable wall of protection. Furthermore, the Hastati were highly trained and skilled soldiers, and their tactics and formation played a significant role in their success on the battlefield. They were taught to fight in a tightly packed formation, allowing them to protect one another with their shields while attacking their enemies with their weapons. This tactic made it difficult for the enemy to land a blow on any individual Hastati, making the need for body armour less pressing. In conclusion, the decision for Hastati to forego body armour was a combination of cost and practicality. The tunic provided some protection, and the scutum shield covered a significant portion of the body, while the soldiers' training and tactics also played a vital role in their success on the battlefield. 
The Romans understood that the best armour is often a combination of practicality and training, and the Hastati is a prime example of this principle. Talking of shields, the scutum shield used by the Roman Hastati during the early Republican period was a large rectangular shield made of wood and covered with layers of animal hide. This design was an improvement over the earlier hoplon shield, which was used by the Greeks and other Mediterranean peoples. There is some debate among historians as to whether the Romans went straight from the hoplon shield to the rectangular scutum, or if there was an intermediate step with an oval or oblong shield. Some argue that the oblong shield was used as a transitional design because it was easier to make and provided a similar level of protection to the rectangular scutum. Regardless of the exact shape, the scutum was designed to protect the body of the wielder in several ways. First, the large size of the shield allowed the soldier to crouch behind it and use it as cover while advancing on the enemy. The shield also had a boss, or central protrusion, which allowed the soldier to use it as a weapon to strike their opponent. The boss could also be used to deflect blows from enemy weapons, providing additional protection to the wielder. Additionally, the scutum was covered in layers of animal hide which made it more resilient to arrows and other missile weapons. Despite this lack of armour, one piece of equipment the Hastati did have was a helmet. The bronze helmet worn by the Roman Hastati was a vital piece of protective equipment. It was the only part of the body that was exposed, and it was also the main target when attacking someone. Protecting the head was crucial, as a well-placed blow to the head could incapacitate or even kill a soldier. Bronze was the metal of choice for most helmets during the Republican era due to its strength and durability. However, bronze was also relatively easy to work with and more affordable than other materials such as iron or steel, making it a practical choice for the Roman army. One of the most common types of helmet worn by the Hastati was the Monte Fortino helmet. This helmet featured a rounded shape that provided good protection to the head and neck. It was also designed with a neck guard that extended down to the back of the neck offering additional protection to this vulnerable area. The Monte Fortino helmet was named after a town in Italy where several examples of this type of helmet were found. The helmet was made of bronze and was constructed from several pieces that were riveted together. The helmet was often adorned with decorative elements such as a crest or plume of feathers on the top of the helmet. These crests were not only ornamental but also served to make the soldier appear more intimidating to the enemy. The Monte Fortino helmet was an effective design that provided adequate protection to the head and neck while remaining relatively lightweight and affordable. It was also a visually striking piece of equipment that helped to identify the soldier as a member of the Roman army. Overall the helmet was an essential piece of protective equipment for the Hastati helping to keep them safe on the battlefield. For weapons, the primary weapon of the Hastati was the Hasta Spear. The Hasta Spear was typically about 6 to 7 feet long and was designed with a triangular point for thrusting attacks. Hoplites, which had been the main form of the soldier in Rome before the reforms, were ancient Greek soldiers who fought in a formation called the Phalanx where they held their spears overarching in a horizontal position to create a wall of spear points. While there is some debate among scholars, it is generally assumed that the Hastati who fought in a similar formation would have also held their spears overarm in a horizontal position. This assumption is based on a few different factors including descriptions of Roman military tactics by ancient historians such as Polybius and Livy as well as depictions of Roman soldiers in artwork and other visual sources. Additionally, the use of overarm spear techniques was common among other ancient Mediterranean cultures, so it is reasonable to assume that the Romans would have also used this technique. Overall, while there is some uncertainty around the specifics of how the Hastati would have held the spears, 
It is likely that they used a similar overarm technique to the hoplites and other ancient soldiers. During the time frame when the Hastati were first introduced in the Roman army, around the 4th century BCE, it is believed that they primarily used the Hasta spear as their main weapon. At this time, the Roman army was still evolving and developing its tactics, and the use of javelins had not yet become a significant part of their military strategy. It was not until the Samnite Wars of 343 to 290 BCE when the Romans faced off against the Samnites, a powerful neighbouring tribe with a well-trained and experienced army that they were exposed to the tactic of throwing javelins to soften up the enemy before engaging them in close combat. The Samnites were skilled at using this tactic, which allowed them to disrupt the formation of the Roman army and inflict significant damage before the two sides closed in for hand-to-hand -hand combat. As a result of their experiences in the Samnite Wars, the Romans began to incorporate the use of javelins into their military strategy. By the time of the Punic Wars, from 264 to 146 BCE, which saw the Roman Republic facing off against the powerful North African city-state of Carthage. The Roman army had become highly skilled in the use of javelins as a means of weakening the enemy before closing in with their Hasta spears. Overall, while the Hastati may not have initially used javelins in their early years, the evolving nature of the Roman military tactics and their exposure to new enemy tactics helped to shape and refine their strategy over time. The use of javelins ultimately became a key component of the Roman army's arsenal and played a significant role in their success on the battlefield. In Battle the early Hastati were an important part of the Roman army and played a key role in their military strategy. Equipped with only a spear, they were a versatile force that could adapt to different situations on the battlefield. During the battle, the early Hastati would typically be positioned behind the skirmishers, who were light infantry units that would engage the enemy at range with missiles such as javelins or slingshots. The skirmishers would soften up the enemy and create openings in their formation, allowing the Hastati to charge forward and engage them in close combat with their spears. One of the key advantages of the early Hastati was their flexibility. Unlike the more rigid and less mobile phalanxes of the Greeks and other Mediterranean cultures, the Hastati were able to move quickly and adapt to changing conditions on the battlefield. This made them well suited to engaging more mobile threats such as the Gauls, who were known for their hit and run tactics and guerrilla warfare. In addition to their mobility, the early Hastati were also highly disciplined and trained to fight in close formation. This allowed them to absorb enemy charges and maintain their formation even in the face of heavy resistance. Overall, the early Hastati were a highly effective fighting force that played a significant role in the early expansion of the Roman Republic. Through their disciplined and adaptive tactics, they were able to overcome a wide range of enemy forces and establish Roman dominance over much of the Mediterranean world. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Or if you really like the channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. There for as little as $1 a month, you'll gain access to an ever-expanding variety of exclusive Ancient History Guy content not found anywhere else online. All donations go directly back into the channel, helping us on our campaign to conquer YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.